And this has got to go onto them. Yeah, we're going to attach the bow piece onto these panels. Okay, so you're you're feathering in this section here. Well, this is the bow. We're just blending in the keel, which right. is the reason why we shaped it like this. Is what I found and the way the skin lies on this. Okay. It'll, like we were talking about before, it'll leave air passage through here that'll keep the wood dry. The advantage with these skin boats is keeping them clean. So you have made a groove right down this for the air to get through. We had also reduced a little weight. Yes. And it's to find a really fine entry as well, in the tracking. All right. What we're going to do now is adjust the rocker. Okay, so you'll clamp it back there, and you've already got it attached on the bow. Okay. So you set your rocker and depth of the boat. Oh, big difference. Yeah. See that? Oh, boy. Okay. So it's a real fine line here. <laughs> The rocker looks just right, the shear looks just right, we might just uh, set our keel right there. Okay. Different bolts at different heights and lengths and widths and still use the same parts. So okay. it's an easy system where we can uh, adapt the same parts and have different bolts. Okay, so you've got a triangle, and a triangle, and a triangle. This is the area they are working on duplicating. Now they're drilling holes to tie the kilson to the stern piece. They're creating three different triangles with three holes in the kilson and three holes in the stern piece. Leave the tail again twice. So this is 100 pound test line, it'll be about yeah. eight, eight lines on each one, it'll be three totals, it's 2,400 pounds on this joint. That ought to hold. <laughs> <laughs> Now it's always protected in that hole and can never get disturbed. Before. So the more often we put in there, the better at the turn. We put the needle through, so there's always a space to, for lashing off. If you notice, wherever there's a joint, there's a break. There's a broken edge or a relief in there, so we can get a needle in there. It's a lot quicker and easier. You don't have to struggle with it. See the shock absorption that's built in here. Needle passage. You can see there's one, two, three, four pieces total. That's the bow plate, lower bow piece, and the upper bow piece. Mm -hmm. The reason why this isn't done in one piece is because it's susceptible for damage and breaking. So by breaking it and making two pieces, it can't uh, be broken like this. And that's going to keep this upper piece from racking from side to side. Mm -hmm. Okay. And sliding back and forth. And then when this gets tied, it cannot uh, move in any direction. And there's always a little bit of give and a little bit of play. And that gives a little bit of shock absorption in this piece. So if something does violently impact it or something, it's going to give and it's going to stretch rather than break. Mm -hmm. That's why there's, we don't use any glue in this. Yep. The bow awesome. plate's white oak, and these pieces are yellow cedar. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we're using white oak on here even though it's very heavy, it has to be bent. You can see a piece bent in here. 
okay. on a piece of fur. And this has been boiled. I'll have to shorten it up in length. Yeah. The Greenland boats, they usually have them. Look at that bio left off sheet. Flexible from our qualities. Yeah, the flex is so important um, as far as the total structure of the boat, which is very flexible. As well, so you got to have a compatibility there. Just to show you the bow on, the singles on the right side in black and the doubles on the left side in brown. This is the stern, just to show you the single is on your left and the doubles on your right. dowel pins in here yes and uh, they're in between these sort of sequence that look like a Y and yeah they'll, these lashings these are going to be tied and they're going to be pulling into one another these dowel pins will keep this piece from going from side to side this way mm -hmm. and from sliding back and forth this way but we'll get the majority of the strength off the lashings uh, even when it's lashed there won't be any glue and we'll have a little bit of built-in shock absorption in here so they will be able to move a little bit okay i'm just gonna start a little knot in here so they don't slip on us too much once they start binding on one another mm -hmm. i can start reefing on it a little bit more so you go through each hole about six times first to build it up? I'm going to start alternating now with as long as you have four okay. in each hole is more than enough. Okay. You don't have to get too crazy tight on this because uh, we're going to turn this V into a Y. Yes. That'll really cinch it up. Mm-hmm.
So you left a little gap in there so you can pass a needle in through that. Yeah, exactly. And it also gives a little cleaner finish to our joint. Yeah. And I'm just going to do a couple of series of half hitches. Okay. My tail I left a little short, so I'm going to have to thread the needle each time. Yes. Yoke. We use it because it's real strong and holds the whole bow together. Right. And um, we worked it flat and stuck a bunch of them in a big pot of water and boiled it for over an hour. Wow. And then took it out and clamped it on a little setup like that. Okay. So and, that's like uh, a jig. Yeah. I let it sit for, gosh, this has been in here three weeks now. Well, a few days. So it's done. Mm -hmm. uh, you can actually take it out after the next day and put it on. Okay. We're going to, this has been drilled to match with these corresponding holes. Okay. And we're going to do some scorps in here, sand this up a little bit, and then lash it onto there. I try to over bend them a little bit so then when they have a memory, they relax, they come back down. In this particular case, it was clamped so long and it held its shape. But as soon as we lash it down, we'll be able to pull this down easy enough uh, when we're pegging in. Yeah. Oh, nice. It's nothing like the right chisel. Connect these holes. So then when we put the line, later on there's a piece of wood that rides over the top of this that's going to create a sort of canopy so we can get airflow through here. Uh. And these lines will make it these scorps will make the lines flush. Yes. So they won't get abraded. Yes. They'll be protected and they won't leave a lump in our piece. Right. The reason why we lash it first is because We'll still have plenty of mobility to get it just right where we want it before we peg it, and the lashings will help us hold it. It'll act like a clamp. Yes. This will get tied on the same way we did the other one. It'll be a flexible clamp. Mm hmm. I'm just going to put a center mark on here so we know what we're at. Yes. to see the whole thing. You angle them against each other. Okay. Right. Our angles of these dowels for structure and this is a saw. Take it right off the side. Like that. Okay, that's perfect. This is the uh, section cut out for the bow plate to fit in. This is our bow plate. And we're enjoying some music from Yemen. And this is the uh, star and piece that has been lashed together. It will be pegged down the center in a minute. And this has got to go onto them. Yeah, we're going to attach the bow piece onto these gunnels. Okay. So we'll clamp them up uh, loosely and then we'll peg them. All right. And uh, do some lashings on them. Okay. That's the angle. How far down are you going? Almost I halfway I just took it down? to the tape. All right. Let's
good. Okay. So we'll have a rounded stern on the top. Okay, so we'll have a lashing strap in this. Okay. I'll tie all this together. Okay. Then if you remember, we have a key piece in here. Yes. We'll have a lashing in here that'll we'll drill right through the key piece in front of that pin. Okay. Actually, these pins go on that other angle, so we'll go on this side of the pin. Okay. All right. Kari is using the Spanish Linless, you'll see, he's putting together to tighten up on the attachment. He's winching in the stringers, it's the bottom stringers, you can see here in this. So this is how he's going to bring them in. Once he has them winched in and snugged up just right, he then he drills holes beside the cheek pieces and then he stitches them on to the bow piece. I think I think so. I think you're but uh, I think you kind of cradle them. This one's exceptionally harder too because it's uh, it's so long. Usually the strings come in somewhere around here. Okay. Which makes it a lot easier to do the cuts. Right. <laughs> This is the area they are working on duplicating. <laughs> 